Hi guys, Rose here with the Cackling Moon. This is going to be a client's love spell reading. The love spell is, um, how many cards are we? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So it's a ten card spread. It's a full, I usually say my ten card and up are full size readings. Um, so this is a, a quite the reading that we'll be doing today. Um, and my client also submitted a question in email, so let's see what they had to say. Um, I feel a strong connection with a guy. Uh, we text and tweet and Snapchat with one another all the time, yet have not met in person. Yet. <laughs> I like how you put yet in caps. We have been keeping it pretty platonic to do. We do flirt a little, but it's, a, it's mostly laughter, notes of encouragement and venting, and have inquired about one another's relationship status, both single. Okay, so that's a good that's a good sign there. We are both really busy. I'm busy with my doctoral doctoral studies and he is very busy with his business. He's very passionate about his work. Yet we often text and often it feels really really good. November 11, 1111, 11, we will finally meet at an event. Oh, that's exciting. Um, I am a Leo and and you said he's a he's a Capricorn. So, um I typically I'm very assertive in my relationship pursuits. However, in this instance, my intuition is telling me to be patient and put strengthening and put strengthening our friendship first and the romance will follow. I totally agree and I will explain why. <laughs> um, my question is, what factors should I be aware of that is important for me to know moving forward in this relationship with the romantic potential? So I love it. So we're going to really be diving in deep about... Um, like what factors you should be aware of and and you know what 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 may happen but what I was gonna say is for him to be a Capricorn and I'm still learning I'm still learning my astrology stuff um, I've been taking a online course and just taking it slow but from what I know Capricorns are very um, they're very straightforward type people they are very um, how do I say this? Because Capricorns are so different from like my sign as a Pisces where I'm very dreamy and into my, you know, in my mind and in my own world. Capricorns are like, they like to get the job done. They're very worker oriented. They are very, um, they, they, they just get the, they get stuff done. They're straightforward. They're serious a lot of the times. Um, not very intuitive. Um, I mean, I'm sure that they could be if you, depending on their moon sign and all of that, but um, in general, Capricorns are probably the furthest from the most intuitive sign. <laughs> they they just have other things on their mind. They're more um, into the, the positive or into the, uh, not the positive, but well, I, I mean, they're positive people, I'm sure, but they are more into the material realm while, rather than being up in the dream state or the um, astral realm, if you know what I mean. <laughs> and for you as a Leo, um, you do like to take charge. You do like to be the center of attention. Um, you're going to bring life into a Capricorn. Um, I do feel a lot Leo energy will be that way, but again, Leo energy can be very overpowering as well. So, um, your intuition is very correct, um, where you feel you need to be, you need to come more patient in this situation. This one flew out, so I'm going to use that one. Um, so to be more patient and to really, um, kind of slow yourself down a little bit. Um, bring yourself down a couple of notches because um, the Capricorn energy may uh, not be w right where you're at <laughs> and um, you don't want to scare them away but I also feel like you're going to bring life you're going to bring sunshine because Leo is the, the sign of the sun and you're going to bring some sunshine into their um, into their world so it's going to I see it as a good thing um, but I do see it has potential to be a little um just a little maybe head butting at times because Capricorns are, um, they can be that way. They could be very stubborn. So it's just a quality that is just part of them. But if they are, if they are aware of their stubbornness and they're aware of their ways, then it, usually they tend to try to be a little bit, um, softer which is how I'm seeing how you are. You kind of know your, you know your sign and you know how Leos can be. 
um, a little bit overpowering or prideful. And so you know that you have to kind of be more patient and take a little step down a little bit. So um, it's really good, good sign to me that you are showing that already. Um, so we'll see. Okay. So I'm going to be working with the Ghost Tarot. I don't believe I have filmed this deck yet, um, this year at least, with the spooky reading. So the Ghost Tarot and Madame Andorra's fortune cards. I love the backs of these these cards. I mean, they're so like, um, <laughs> they're just so elaborate looking. So kind of cool. They actually kind of mix. I'm going to put this deck over here so I don't knock it off the table. And we again we had a card that flew out of the deck and if you see me flipping the cards around I don't read reversals although I do read intuitively as if it was supposed to be a reversal so um, if I do <laughs> if I do flip it around it's because I just want to have it up right side up for myself okay um, so we're gonna begin with the witch so the witch is you right now and the card that flew out was is the six of wands no Six of Swords. Sorry, this deck, the little swords are right there at the very bottom. Okay, so Six of Swords for you right now. So you are in an energy of going into or searching for a peaceful state from an otherwise um, chaotic, an otherwise stressful situation or environment, okay? So a Six of Swords to me is you venturing into or looking for calmer waters and peace. Now, when we're looking at this in terms of love, um, I'm seeing this as maybe you've had past experiences in relationships that um, love was a little tumultuous. You may have been in stressful relationships. You may have been in um, an, a nasty breakup, things like that. And I just feel like, oh, hang on one second. <laughs> Okay, sorry about that. So um, you're venturing off into looking for more peaceful state, more um, basically a relationship that is not as dramatic, not as taking a lot out of you emotionally, physically, mentally. Um, you are looking for something that is just more peaceful for you. And I feel like that is what that sign or what this card is resembling for you. <laughs> Sorry guys, I had like a text message coming in and I can't ignore it. Um, okay, so from what I'm feeling intuitively, I really feel like definitely you are pretty much looking for, you're just looking for love that is not going to require a lot out of you. I feel like you give, you naturally give your all into relationships. I feel like you naturally give a lot of your attention into relationships and you know, as much as that could be a good thing, it could also be a negative too because people who are very giving of themselves and their energies and emotions tend to be the ones that receive um, a lot of, just a lot of crap. I mean, and, and this isn't everybody. I shouldn't say everybody. I tend to do that. I tend to say everybody, everybody. <laughs> but what I'm saying is if you are that person that always gives, 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 and you don't realize or you don't catch that you are the only one giving in the relationship and the other person is not, um, it becomes quickly a very uneven, unequal relationship. And you get to this point where you stress yourself out and you feel taken advantage of and you feel um, just it, it just becomes too much. And usually that becomes the breaking point in most relationships. So I, I really felt drawn to focus on this card a lot. Um, I hope that that message really rang true for you because I really, <laughs> I felt called to like stick to it. And I do apologize for answering um, a text message on my phone. I just, I had to, I had to. So there's certain people that um, I can't 
ignore. <laughs> and, um, and I can't end the video and start a new one because YouTube got rid of their um, editing thing. So I can't edit, like put together different videos. Otherwise, it's just a mess. It's so annoying. <laughs> I have to find my own editing software. So anyways, enough, enough blabbering on. Okay, cauldron. So the cauldron is your hopes for this love. So what do you hope for out of this relationship and or possible relationship? And we have eight of swords. Oh, I love it. So eight of swords is a sign. It's a card of freeing. It's, it's a card of trust. It is a card of peace. Um, so I see that we have an angel. She is bound. Her hands are bound and her eyes are blindfolded. Now, naturally, this is a card of feeling like you are imprisoned and feeling like there is no hope for the future. But I want to say that because she has her angel wings out, which are really standing out to me, um, even though she's bounded, like she's she's tied up, she's blindfolded, her wings are are holding her back. She knows that even though she were to, if she were to jump off the cliff, her wings would not allow her to fall. She would fly. So I feel like for you, your hopes for this re this potential relationship is obviously one that would be successful. But I also feel like this would be the one relationship that would prove to you, which is what you're seeking, how you are taking off and seeking peace. You are seeking um, a relationship that is not stressful and, and overbearing that you would find that with this person, okay? So I feel like that is what you are hoping for. Just a new, fresh, new start, but a relationship that is, you know, equal. Um, next we have Eye of Frog, what you are failing to see. Am I on the right one? Love spell, yes, okay. I just wanna make sure. Eye of Frog, what you're failing to see. We have the Knight of Swords. Wow, you are getting a lot of Swords cards in your reading. This is also telling me that swords energy is your mind and what you're thinking. So this is telling me that you have a lot of, um, <laughs> like you think a lot. You, you Maybe you overanalyze a bit too much. So maybe that's why we have a lot of the swords cards coming up. Um, but the knight of swords is um, uh, what you're failing to see. <sighs> but it's like, obviously, I feel like you already know that he's right there in front of you, that this person is, you know, a potential. But I feel like what you're failing to see is that they are very aggressive and they are very um, also eager to meet you and make something happen. I feel like maybe you doubt your feelings and you doubt like what you are experiencing. And um, I see the Knight of Swords all about he's ready like he's very you know he's ready to take action because a knight of swords card is a like an action oriented card it is fast forward it is a rush um so maybe you're failing to see that also on his end he is also eagerly wanting this meeting to take place and maybe you you start to doubt yourself sorry i feel like i'm getting sick you guys <laughs> um Maybe you begin to doubt yourself and you begin to think, well, I know I am really interested in him, but I don't think that he would be that interested in me. Well, the cards are showing me that he is, and the cards are also showing me that he is also very eager to see you um, and to meet you. So if that was if that was ever a doubt in your mind, just know <laughs> the cards are showing otherwise, so... Um, unicorn horn, a wish for the future. Um, oh, I'm sorry. We just did eye of frog. So puppy tongue, how to approach the situation. <laughs> um, so how to approach the situation with the puppy tongue. Um, the four, oh, we got the four. Okay. So this is the emperor. I love it. This is so you guys too. Um, your energy is very emperor energy. Um, more so yours than, his, well, I guess his too as a Capricorn, but for Leo, I totally see it. It's actually Aries though, but I love that we have a ram because the Capricorn is part of goat as well. And, um, and I just feel like that energy is just, all of those energies are just really powerful, headstrong, also headstrong type people. Um, but I see the emperor car to, to kind of reveal, um, approaching it 
one being really stable and grounded for sure because it, this card doesn't depict it but the emperor is usually cloaked in red okay and red to me is a card of um it symbolizes the root chakra which is all about grounding so making sure that you approach this situation being very grounded um don't go in not confident because what this person loves about you or is it finds attractive about you is your confidence that leo energy um so go in it normally and as yourself but also make sure you are very grounded to keep from the nervousness and and all of that um also go into it very confident because as you are heading into this relationship or hoping for what you want from this relationship with that six of swords energy you're kind of like I hope that this is it. I hope this is it. I hope this isn't going to be a stressful um, relationship, blah, 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 blah. Emperor energy is very sure of what he's doing. He doesn't second guess. Um, he doesn't have that nervous energy to him. And so I feel like that's what you need to bring to the table. Um, even though you are hoping and seeking um, a less stressful, um, less problematic connection, don't portray that to him and don't reveal that to him either. So I feel like this is also saying like, keep yourself in check and in order. Don't bring out the baggage. Don't bring out the past. None of that stuff. Always aim forward. Okay. And also because he's sitting right like forward like this, I also feel like this indicates to be straightforward with this person. Um, no beating around the bush, that type of thing. But also don't reveal, don't reveal all of your skeletons on the first day. Um, don't <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> so make sure that you are grounded, you're comfortable, confident, and um, it should be a really good meeting. Okay, so now we go to the unicorn horn, which is a wish for the future. So here's a wish. We have, <laughs> we have the nine of cups. Finally, we have a cup card here. Oh my gosh. And, and so the nine of cups, a wish for the future, obviously is the cards are showing this is going to be a really good union. I feel like this is going to be something that will be slow moving, which I think is something you need. So don't expect this to take off right off the bat, even though he's heading into this with very knight of swords energy. Okay. Um, he's excited as well, but I feel like the whole um, experience and everything that will happen after this meeting um, will be slow. It'll be a slow process, but it'll be good for you. It needs to happen slowly. So don't don't expect to rush through things, that kind of thing. Um, but I feel, I love this. I think this is a beautiful card to receive as a wish because I feel like it reveals the whole um, connection and the whole process of dating and courtship. So it's so cute, it's so sweet. So if you can't tell, this is a ghost. She's sitting here with her flowers, and we have a gentleman here who is asking her. It looks like he's asking her to dance, but <laughs> that's just the way I'm seeing it. What a sweet card. So that's that's very, very promising as well. Um, next, we've got the index finger, which direction to take from this. So if you haven't noticed, all of these weird, like, we have the cauldron, which is the spell, right? You are the witch, and then we have the cauldron, and the eye of frog, puppy tongue, unicorn horn, and the index finger. finger. These are all ingredients that I'm using in the spread <laughs> that make up your love spell. So if you didn't notice, that's what that was. So index finger, which direction to take this? And we have the Ten of Swords. Oh, I love it. So usually a Ten of Swords is a card to be afraid of. And again, we have the Swords card. You bring a lot of Swords energy into this mix, okay? So keep that in mind, your mental state, your mentality, what you think, um, what you worry about, all of that is going to play a part in this whole process. So make sure that you're thinking and you're putting out positive thoughts. Um, don't doubt yourself and don't doubt the process which is exactly what the Ten of Swords is about here. So the it is what direction to take this. This is the, the direction of surrendering, okay? I s totally see this not as defeat, but I see this as the direction of surrendering. It is a very difficult card to look at. <laughs> I apologize for such graphic imagery, but the Ten of Swords is, to me, it is, I'm seeing this as surrendering. You are surrendering yourself to the whole process of starting over to potentially getting into a new relationship, which is maybe a little difficult for you at times because, I, like I said, I feel like you have a past. Um, 
And so it's reinstalling that hope, um, that hope for the future, that hope for new love, that kind of thing. So I feel like it's like if as long as you are ready to surrender mentally, emotionally, and physically to a whole new process of a new potential love, um, things can go very, very well. Um, but you have to be willing to not fight it, which is where I'm saying to get so many um, swords cards, it could be a mental battle for you at times. So I feel like that's where you got to surrender is mentally in your mind. Um, that to understand that not every relationship is going to end bad. Um, not every relationship is going to leave you feeling this way. Um, so putting in that trust. And then we have the three beating hearts, um, which are the three oracle cards that I'm going to pull for you. So three beating hearts are the connection between the two of you. So the oracles are going to explain. And then we have one last tarot card, so I'll keep that over here. The oracle cards are going to explain um, the connections. So let's see what the Madame and Dora's fortune cards have to say. And I already shuffled. So we have the queen, love and prosperity. So as one connection, the queen, love and prosperity, this is revealing um, a beautiful connection, obviously, of power. Um, I feel like this, this potential love connection will revitalize you. It'll bring you confidence and it'll make you feel um, worthy, worthy and worth something again. Um, I also feel for him, it'll be just his ability to prove himself that he is a good person and that he is able to, you know, make someone else happy. And I feel like he has his own struggles um, with relationships from the past as well. But I don't want to dive too much into him because it's not his reading. But from your perspective, a queen card is very confidence. It's like a, it's a confidence booster for you. So I feel like even though you're going into this maybe a little bit nervous, worried about the past, um, it's going to bring out some strength for you. What a beautiful card to receive. The, the second beating heart is the sun. Your per, your perseverance is rewarded. Now, first off, I want to say I love that you got the sun card because this is your sign. Um, so that is one thing as well. It's sun brings out happiness. It brings out light, um, especially when we are walking in a dark tunnel. It's the light at the end of our tunnel. Um, it's just a an energy boost sign. It cleanses, it clears, and it revitalizes. So I feel like this is definitely showing that all of your perseverance, all of the hard work, even the worries, um, it's going to pay off. What a beautiful combo. It's such bright colors here. <laughs> lots, of, lots of good things are ahead for you, definitely. And finally, the third beating heart, we received the gate. Oh, so this is a barrier keeps you from your goal. I love that the Madame and Dora fortune cards are so truthful. And the fact that you got the gate, which is the barrier, I'm telling you right now, the barrier that I'm seeing here in this reading are your swords cards. Okay? So all of the swords cards, um, which is the, men the mental state, that is going to act as your barrier. That is what's going to hold you back. Now, it doesn't mean that this is definitely going to keep, you know, potential new love hap from happening. But if you continue to dwell in the past, if you continue to worry about the past or compare, because you don't want to compare him to past lovers, um, that will forever be your gate. That will forever be your, ba your barrier from you, you finding happiness and love so make sure that you keep that in mind um, because like I said you have a whole bunch of swords cards but when we when we pulled about um, the possible outcome the wish for the future you got the the cups cards and it was a very powerful cup card as well so there is potential for happiness and there's potential for love here but you will be the person that will act as that barrier your mind, your doubts, your worries, your the past. If you dig into the past, it will definitely act as a gate for you to reach um, the end point, you know, the happiness. So keep that in mind. That's really, really important for you to remember. Now, the final card, this is the potion. So this is the whole spell that we just did, the love spell. And now we're going to pull the potion card, which is the final outcome. 
and we have the nine of swords see what I was just saying with the gate and the nine of swords the swords will forever be your gate if you don't do anything about it the swords card is showing outcome of stress and outcome of fear and allowing your fears and the past to get to you if you continue to do that to yourself you won't see this potential future of a relationship or blooming if you allow the doubts the fears the thoughts of the future the past I mean the thoughts of the future the worries of the future and then the past to get to you you will forever be stuck in that mindset okay you have so many swords cards we have one two three four five swords cards in your reading of 10 cards so half of them <laughs> half of them and then you know the gate card is warning you if you allow those to, to continue to be blocks this is what's going to happen so you don't want this to happen you don't want to be forever locked into a nightmare you don't want to be forever locked into your own stress and worry you want to get out of this so um i do say the first thing to work on before you even meet him is yourself and your mind clearing your mind which is why i said when you enter this relationship or you enter into meeting one another you go into it grounded and confident a um, emperor card is never going to feel what a nine of swords feels okay he's never he's he is very sure of himself he's a very confident being he's very um, grounded like I said so it's gonna be really important for you to get rid of all of those those worries those thoughts those negative thinking and surrender to that surrender to the fact that you yes an, a new relationship can bring the potential of a broken heart but that is the risk that everybody has to take if you really want love so you're walking away from something major from the past continue moving on from it but make sure you're leaving the baggage as well because you don't need to bring that with you into the future so my love this is your love spell reading thank you so much for trusting in me to read for you i highly highly suggest anyone who's watching um this is a really good reading especially if you have questions about love any kind of question it doesn't have to be dating it could be a relationship question or anything i can totally twist it around to work with this reading the spell the spell the spread um and to you, my client, um, I apologize for a couple of the delays <laughs> with the texting and my sneezing and all of that. But um, I just hope that you were able to get a really good message here. If you have any questions or if you would like to leave me some feedback, send me an email. Um, and anyone who's curious of this reading or anything else that I offer, um, check the link below in the description box. Go check out my shop. I have a lot of <clears throat> Halloween themed readings available. I would love to read for you. And yeah, and I will see you guys later. Take care. Bye guys.